taunting trout to stalking bucks and how to remove a tick from the end of your old chap. This was that small. <laughs> <laughs> the glorious 12th, the start of shooting. Deborah Hadfield previews the 2022 grouse season. Plus, Dan at Shooting Sports UK suggests three top value scopes for under a thousand pounds. That's going to last longer than the rifle. That's going to last longer than the rifle. <laughs> We're giving away one of the new Gen 2 Ico Tech Helion Fox Callers, priced at 195 pounds. We have news. We have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Before we hit the sun-baked crops of Wiltshire in search of a roebuck, we're chilling at the Manningford Trout Fishery, fed by the pristine waters of the River Avon. It's one of Mark Bellamy's favourite haunts and he's invited fellow Shooter King Ambassador Paul for an evening on the Bucks. First, it's about winding down. Name a spot. Winding Name in a, spot. a trout. Oh, oh f that one last cast. Somebody said that uh, fishing is supposed to be uh, relaxing, but... I'm finding it quite stressful right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the warm-up for the Robux. Is it? Yeah, it's get you nice and relaxed. Okay. Chill you right out and uh, bide a bit of time. And uh, yeah. Improve your communication skills with the Robux, is it? It's to put out the good vibes. Is it? Yes. Get in the zone. Get in the, get in the zone. No, we're always going out rushing, David, so we thought we'd come out with a little bit of a nice bit of relaxing. <laughs> You've been here for hours, haven't you? Just arrived. <laughs> I haven't done any of this business for like 20 years, so that means I must have done it when I was 18. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> Under pressure now, look, you better catch his chin. Oh no, he's dropping it in there nicely. This is called a Roebuck. So this is Paul's choice. Looks like David. It looks like my microphone. <laughs> Bay, actually. <laughs> what starts out as relaxing ends up being stressful, with the desire to catch a trout becoming more and more important. One last cast, one last <laughs> cast. What well, about the last go? And another one. Just, just one more try. Never give up. This is dark. We have got a few robot on there. It ends up with Fen from the fishery casting for Mark and Paul to try and land something. It's a sterling effort. As Mark had caught a rainbow earlier in the afternoon, we call it a day and think about calling a buck. Time's marching on, Mr. Childley. What's the plan? Well, I think we can go and get to uh, go for a roebuck now. So we go from these to these. Ah, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Mark's ground is vast in terms of acreage and also size of field. He often needs to take long shots here. He hopes that right now the row will be switched onto the call, if he doesn't lose it. You've got some big ground here, Mark, so obviously you're spotting them from many hundreds of metres off and yeah. trying to pull them in. Yeah, call, call them with a boot out in your hand like that, then once you get them in closer, just put it into your pocket, just softens it a little bit. Mm. I find that works. But like, like Paul said, if you try to keep giving it some when they're, they're running in, you can spook them and they'll just run off. Yeah. I don't think I've ever stalked in this type of ground. I mean, it's, it's different, isn't it, from woodland stalking? Very, very... Yeah, it's very open ground. It's surprising how, lot, how they just turn up, because obviously you've got all the, uh, the rough stuff around the edges, as you can see. They'll just turn up from anywhere. So. Bit of good population on here. Yeah, there's a, there's a fair few. There's a couple of good books. There's, um, there's two main books that hold this ground, so... Yeah, hopefully one of them will turn up today and you'll be able to see how good they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you'd be working on your calls. <laughs> Some old boy gave me this. I was in the, in the cafe having a breakfast and he said, oh yeah, Paul Chilly, have a go with this. I've designed it. So, yeah, it's quite good actually. 
quite muffled and quite good for close and stuff. That sounds like that sounds like piggy or porky. What porky, we had a porky, a pig. Yeah, it is a little it squeak. It does sound like it's just out of a toy. It is out of a toy, isn't it? So it works. Well, we're, I haven't actually used it yet, but it doesn't work. Then you don't know it works. I can make that work. Trust me. There's nothing showing for us on this side of the farm apart from a keen doe. Dropping down to the other side, Mark spots another lone female. A buck rises from the tramline. And now our challenge is to get close enough and high enough to see enough of the buck for a shot. Stay close to this edge. We've got the, we've got the cover at the edge. She's on us. The wind is pushing down the field. Mark and Paul feel that it's at an angle that won't spook the deer. It's going to be close. Mark just caught the corner there if we stand. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. 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 As we drop into the crop, the doe clocks us. Paul keeps the buck in play just long enough to take a shot. That was a... <laughs> Excitement? Very quick shot there, Mr. Kilburn. Did you get on camera? Yeah, yeah. That's all we had, wasn't it? That was our window. It's a good book, that was. Lovely colour. Yeah. That's so funny, I see a weird... I shot him. I shot a buck on, on um, Tuesday night. I shot him, I squeaked him in and he'd come and I shot him right in the, above the Adam's apple. And uh, he did exactly the same. To me, it just reacted very strange. He, that, how he that fell. perfect in the wrong Right in the back, the yeah. Um, but I see him, he jumped to me, he jumped right, and I thought, I didn't, I was on him, but... So I think what it was, is as he... He as was going to go. As he turned, as he was going to run, he yeah. shot him, and it was straight in the middle of the back. Yeah, which made him pounce anyway, yeah. Thanks, my friend, that was fantastic. Opportunity, we not have many, have we? No. You said you're going to shoot him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even shooting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's just, um, it's great, isn't it? Not really funny, it's been difficult, and that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to get around it. Rewarding. Yeah, definitely. And not really funny, we've gone quite a strange one. We could have tried to shoot him straight across on the track, yeah. but we actually stalked down into him, got into him. And, and the, way the, the way the wind's blowing just off the corner, I know, just in just, the right position where it's not blowing yeah. right on top of him. And she was uh, on it again, yeah. as they always are. Eyes and ears, aren't they? Whew. Well done. Very good. You sure you got that on film, David? <laughs> it, it, he's a man for that. That's one thing he's actually good at. Fair play. <laughs> it's actually really difficult though, getting stuff on film. Yeah. Actually, as in like getting the shot or seeing the animal, because not at the time you take somebody trying to show them the animal mm -hmm. and trying to like say, I did actually say you got it, David, didn't I? Mm, I'm not sure about that one. I did say that though. But I didn't know what the. I mean, I thought you were going to call it, but I did. Yeah, it ran away. To stop yeah, it. To stop him. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, in the opposite because direction. What, you, what you find on here, they have like a, a limit of like yeah, around push. Like 250 yards. And if you go oh, past course. that that line, yeah. they run. And you know, like most deer, they run and then they'll stop and yeah. turn around to have a look at you. They don't need, yeah. they just run yeah. and run and run. So and you're run, mainly so. long range stuff, are you? Yeah. yeah, I do a lot of long range stuff, yeah. Well, okay. as you can see. Yeah. Apart from when I bring Mr. Childley down and he's always within 100 yards. That's because we've got stalking skills to get him, bring in the old. <laughs> Brilliant. Cool. He needed to have confidence in his Sacco S20 and the 6.5 power blade ammo to take a shot like that. Yeah. He's strong back, isn't he? It is a lovely six pointer. Exactly where I put him. Yeah. It's hit and it's hit the spine and it's come out solid. Yeah. That's just as you turn, wasn't it? That's silent. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that was a very small window. Yeah, it was a small yeah. window, yeah. And a small target, as in like... When you look from where yeah, going 
facing away. The one thing you have said is the copper is really, really accurate. Yes. I would say to anybody using copper, just um, pinpoint your shots a bit more. You don't just, not that we just throw it at things, but when you're using ballistics, you tend to get a little bit, especially when you're culling, you need to shoot a lot of animals. You, you know, you're not pinpointing every yeah. single shot. You're bang, ch -ch bang, ch -ch yeah. bang. Whereas there's not much room for uh, error, I don't think, with copper, but it is very accurate, so. So to celebrate, Mr. Bellamy, you've got some. You've got a treat for us, apparently. I have. This yes. is the only reason I'm here. You know that. All oh, right. You? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I have. Um, I've got some venison and stout sausages that I've uh, made by myself. Venison and steak or stout. Stout venison sausages. And stout sausages. Yes. Um, oh, oh, oh. From a book that was shot off this ground. So very nice they are indeed. Oh yeah. So you, you, uh, do you spend a lot of time sort of creating up these recipes or? No. Um, I use a, a I use a mix from a company called Wash and Fowler. Yeah. Um, they do good mixes, so I use a mix from them and uh, just knock them up and oh, oh, oh. put a bit of weight on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite heavy actually. Back at the car, David asks Mark to name his favourite Shooter King kit. Mark has been working with the brand for years. So, uh, Humflex shirt. I love the shirts, they keep you really cool and uh, Adventum trousers, what I've got on now. The kit that I've got on now is lovely for the summer. Okay, this isn't prepped, is it? You just no, this is no, this just... is No, this is why. So why those trousers? Because oh, they're really light, really comfortable, soft, quiet, which you need when you're stalking. Um, yeah, they're great, I love them. Okay, winter clobber? Oh, a, silver, a silver suit or a, a ve um, Venator. When you say well, silver suit, yeah, so that's silver not you just in tin foil. No, no, silver trousers and a silver jacket. Done stalking in them, flying goshawks in them. Great. Been to Ireland on the bogs. They're just great gear. Okay. Thank you very much for this evening. Was there ever in any doubt that we were going to get one? No, they are about, but with the crop up, you've just got to work for them. So it's a little bit harder, but we uh, we got one, and I got a trout for you as well for dinner. So. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Now, on to a sensitive but important issue. Paul arrived late today because of a tick issue, which David wants to explore further. Hi, Mr. C. Uh, Mark said that there's a very low tick burden here. Yes. But you, we were talking earlier, so you had maybe slightly more tick burden than the than uh, this particular robot. Can you? Uh, <laughs> we need. <laughs> you said you weren't going to bring it up. Today. You said you were going to. We're going to bring up. Yeah, so basically, um, I to say this. This is not funny, this is not funny. No, so basically, I'm really sensitive when it comes to ticks. I'm, I'm quite cautious. I tuck my boots in, um, my toes in the boots. I did spray myself tonight, I always do. I'm on right stalking just around my legs, and um, I've got very sensitive skin. I've probably had in my life probably 20 ticks on me. Considering the job I do is minimal, that's ones that are dug in, and none of them are really, I probably two that are dug in properly. Um, but, um, Tonight, um, I had a surprise when I went to the, for a wee. Um, there was one on the end of the John Thomas. <laughs> We're not oh, funny. sensitive then. Yeah, well, no, well, clearly not. Um, I think he, he probably took on more than he can handle. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make a joke of it because it's quite embarrassing, but I'm, I'm basically saying this because it is important and it was so small, the tick, David. There's so many jokes in this, I know. <laughs> but it, it is important because if I didn't remove it, then obviously there's obviously oh a risk God, of... Oh, that would have been... Of... Wow. Yes. So, yeah, so basically it's really embarrassing, but I'll take one for the team just to get it out there again and um, check your bits. So was the... Clearly. Uh, Go on, a more details. The, well, no, only because, you know, obviously you have the tick removal kit. Yes. This was that small. <laughs> the tick, David, the tick. The tick was that small, I had to use tweezers. <laughs> this is not, this is serious. Yeah, I know it's serious, but it's quite good because we're, make, we're talking about it, which is what you've got to do. Um, and uh, yeah, removed it. Luckily, it didn't make much of a mark. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Wow. So. So with any mouth parts left in it? No, thought I could tell. But yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, I, I filmed with Roy the other week in Hampshire, 
He yep. phoned me and said that he'd found one on his John Thomas. Well, yep. he actually said meat and two veg. Yeah. Um, so you just got to be careful, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, if you're not sure, get somebody else to look for you. <laughs> Oh dear, this has got endless bits on it. But yeah, just it, to be fair, if they're middle of your back or like, you know, your belt line on the back of your knee, you, know, you can't, sometimes you can't take them out and you, and you, and you need somebody else to a wing. How many people did it involve today then? Two. <laughs> <laughs> so including you. <laughs> so there you have it. Check and double check. You don't want a tick to ruin your day or your sure sausage. Not. If you're looking for new or used hunting gear, such as sticks, clothing, or maybe Paul's Sacco S20 setup with the Zeiss V8 scope sitting atop and Stalin moderator on the end, then head to kitfinder.co.uk where dealers all over the UK are ready to respond to your kit requests. There's a link in the description below. Thank you, Paul. And I am glad to say that Kitfinder is delivering customers to gun shops and kit to customers. It's had £180,000 worth of requests for kit in the last week, with Zeiss doing well. Nearly 15% of requests for rifle scopes were for Zeiss, with Leica and Leopold in second and third and Swarovski in fourth place. Still good demand for good quality optics. Next up, keeping it risible, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Rural audiences have criticised the BBC for not representing them. 3,400 people took part in a poll on the British state broadcaster's impartiality. The Countryside Alliance conducted the survey after the BBC announced a review into its nature TV show, Countryfile, following complaints. Viewers said coverage was biased and unfair. The results show audiences feel Countryfile, Springwatch and radio drama The Archers failed to represent their way of life. Shows featuring Chris Packham fared the worst. 90% of respondents agreed Springwatch and Autumn Watch were not a realistic representation of rural life. The Countryside Alliance will give its findings to the BBC. It says two thirds of its members who voted want the licence fee scrapping. Our advice to the BBC is simple. Don't sweep the problems under the rug when it comes to the feedback from this survey. It's not going to go away. The BBC needs to get round the table and have some difficult discussions about the future of rural programming. They need to seriously look at the feedback from the, some of the programmes like Autumn Watch and Spring Watch and think about the long-term future of presenters like Chris Packham, who defies their very own guidance when it comes to past land campaigning. If the BBC want a successful future with the rural audience, it needs to accept they've got a problem, they need to follow their own guidance. Staying with the BBC and their TV presenter, Chris Packham, has taken a swipe at Welsh farmer Gareth Wynne-Jones. In a tweet, he described him as a super troll. He also said when Jones plays to a deadhead, deadbeat and destitute audience of dead enders. The Welsh farmer, whose family has farmed in the Welsh hills for 350 years, soon made fun of the tweet. He retweeted it, asking maybe I should ask Packham for a reference. Other Twitter users piled in to defend Gareth and criticise Packham. Meanwhile, Packham also criticises BBC TV presenter Adam Henson over his support for shooting at this year's Game Fair. A new government consultation says the number of deer in England could be the highest for a thousand years. A deer management paper from DEFRA and the Forestry Commission suggests that rules on shooting wild deer may be relaxed to control their surging numbers. The aim is to better protect woodlands and agricultural crops from deer damage. Ministers are proposing that land managers can cull male deer at any time of the year and also allow them to shoot deer at night. Basque is hoping licensing for such work will be easier to get compared to the current system. The main species that cause problems are fallow deer um, and they're pockets all over, the, all over England um, where we have these huge herds of fallow deer. Um, and the other species of particular concern I think is the muntjac because it's a, a, a non-native species as well. Um, so they're the two species that we need to really concentrate on and that's where I think the incentives need to be targeted. Magistrates have found five hunt sabs guilty of using threatening words and behaviour at a hunt meet. 
The Cheshire Sabs were found guilty after a three-day trial at Loughborough Magistrates Court. Three Hunt supporters, including a 15-year-old girl and two men aged 61 and 52, were attacked by the gang as they followed the Rutland Hunt in Leicestershire in January. The five men, four from Stockport and one from Altrincham, will be sentenced on the 5th of September 2022. Tim Bonner of the Countryside Alliance welcomed the verdict and praised the bravery of witnesses for giving evidence. He warned the gang has been terrorising rural communities for several years. He claims they represent a strand of violent extremism. The Irish government has granted more than 80 hair coursing licences. The Department of Heritage approved the licence for the Irish Coursing Club on behalf of more than 80 affiliated clubs. It allows the clubs to net and tag live hairs for the winter season. Clubs must tag each hair and give the full details to the government four days before a meeting. Anti-coursing organisation the Ban Blood Sports Group criticises the decision and is calling for a ban. The Irish Coursing Club says antis ignore the conservation work carried out by clubs throughout the year. Anglers are victorious after saving fishing at a Nottinghamshire wildlife reserve. The Angling Trust and the Countryside Alliance campaigned to save the rights to fish at the Attenborough Reserve. The Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust reduced and eventually suspended fishing rights. After meeting the Angling Trust and members of the Nottingham Anglers Association, the Wildlife Trust agreed to allow fishing to resume. Negotiations will continue into the details of what areas anglers can use once fishing starts in June next year. They've clearly been very good tenants of that site over 20 odd years. Um, we have established the parameters uh, on how those license negotiations will, will uh, continue and, and will come to fruition uh, well in time for the opening of, of fishing in June 2023. I think everyone's pleased. Yes, it's a win-win for everyone. A global shortage of non-lead ammunition could lead to a shortage of game on supermarket shelves. A report in the Sunday Telegraph claims industry leaders are warning the scarcity is an issue as stores such as Waitrose and leading game dealers are increasingly refusing to buy meats such as pheasant and venison that have been shot with lead ammunition. The article says continuing supply chain issues are a result of the pandemic and war in Ukraine, which has prompted a worldwide shortage of steel. The National Game Dealers Association says the supply of non-lead shot meat is stalling when the public appetite for it is increasing. Most shooting organisations have voluntarily committed game shooters in England to phasing out lead shot and plastic wads in shotgun cartridges by 2025. Thanks to Jeff Smith for the story. A new study by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust says that managed moorlands are better than rewilding projects when meeting the government's environmental goals. The Trust's scientific review claims that daily activities carried by gamekeepers out on grouse moors produce a wide range of benefits including increasing biodiversity and saving threatened species. It also mitigates climate change and reduces the risk of wildfire. The study looked at work done by regional moorland groups such as controlled burns, re-wetting of peat bogs and predation management. The report concludes that moorland ecosystems managed for grouse shooting deliver a net gain for society under the specifications outlined by DEFRA. Deborah has a report on grouse shooting later in the show. The media is reporting that the UK government has given a grant of £116,000 to a charity backed by Hollywood star Leonardo DiCaprio. The Mail says the UK taxpayers' money has gone into the conservation group Rewild, which the actor co-funded last year. The charity has received four payments as part of a three-year grant that is secured to protect a species of dwarf buffalo called the Tamaroar on one small island in the Philippines. The cash comes from a DEFRA scheme which gives grants to protect biodiversity and the natural environment around the world. A town council in West Sussex claims it's the first in Europe to endorse a plant-based treaty. Haywards Heath's Environment Working Group says its eco-initiative will encourage people to switch to plant-based foods. It claims to tackle emissions from livestock farming and deforestation. A spokesman for the council says it is not directing people to follow the treaty, but it's signposting that it exists. A young angler in Norway has caught a mountain trout topping 10 pounds. 12-year-old Hans Sverrelango caught the 5-kilogram monster in the Jotaheimen Mountains. He's been showing off his prize on social media, getting more than 4,000 likes and 300 comments. 
His father, Vidar, also caught a trout weighing four kilograms. Fish have a limited food supply in Norway's mountain streams and rarely grow that large. Thanks to Per Holmseth for the story. And finally, professional snake hunters have descended on the Everglades for the annual Florida Python Challenge. The state's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission set up the event in 2013 to tackle the problem of invasive Burmese pythons, which have set up home in Florida's iconic Everglades. The commission blames the snake for the decline in deer, raccoons, possums and foxes. It also claims they've killed 90% of the animals. More than 850 people are taking part in the 10-day challenge. Last year, entrants caught and killed more than 200 pythons. Winners don't just get bragging rights, there are cash prizes too. Thanks to James Schneider for the story. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Buying shooting kits? Then head to Kit Finder, and our team will help you find the right product at a fair price from dealers all over the UK. Kit Finder, the shooting kit comparison website. Friday is the glorious 12th of August 2022, the start of grouse shooting. Our news correspondent, Deborah Hadfield, heads for the moors to find out what kind of a season it's going to be. Anties target the grouse season. They're determined to cause disruption. The biggest target is August the 12th, as they know many driven shoots will be on the moors. Here on the Wentworth estate, shooting won't actually start on the 12th. It's been delayed to avoid clashes with anties. A lot of places don't like shooting on the 12th because, you know, the anties are out trying to, you know, stop shoots, not just on the 12th, but, you know, other days as well. But we just like to avoid that day to avoid that hassle. Right in the Peak District here, it's really bad for it. Uh, you know, we're so close to these massive cities like Sheffield and Manchester. So yeah, it is a problem down here. It would help if this season were more glorious, as shoots have suffered in the last two years. In 2020, Covid hit. Then last year, the weather blighted the season. Looking around at the heather now, you can see it's in really good nick. The last couple of years, uh, a lot of the Peak District more has been hampered with heather beetle. Um, most of the moors have got over that, but still some moors have got heather beetle. Um, just the weather as well hasn't been conducive for uh, chicks, but uh, spring 2022 has been good for all the chicks, you know, especially the insects, which is the foundations for all of our um, ground nesting birds. And there is reason to be optimistic this year. We've had a decent spring. Um, we've not had the late snow or the downpours of previous years and admittedly the really really hot weather in the last couple of weeks hasn't helped but on the whole it looks like we're going to have a better season than we've had for previous years. Not all moors will start shooting on the 12th, some will kick in on later than the season and obviously each moor is site specific but on the whole we are looking better for the season. The grouse shooting industry employs thousands of people. It's worth more than £65 million. The Glorious 12th isn't just a celebration for the shooting community or the grouse shooters or the beaters, it's a celebration for all. It's a celebration of this unique landscape, this landscape that attracts around 30 million visitors to the Dales, to the North York Moors and to the Peak District National Parks. The pubs in the area, um, you know, put the guns up when they come here shooting. Uh, we have catering staff, we have all the vehicles. Um, so, you know, everybody benefits. Grouse shooting also brings people together and creates community spirit. It is for everybody, so, you know, obviously children on school holidays at the moment, um, especially over lockdown the last two years, they haven't been with their mates, they haven't been able to make pocket money. You know, we're looking forward to the next couple of weeks um, where they can all get together. You know, it's good for everybody. It's good for the farmers that have just finished their lambing, shearing, haymaking. Um, all get together. It's just a really good community spirit here. 
you can end up covering a lot of miles. So fitness levels, you have to be, you know, a bit fitter. Um, you, because it happens in August, uh, generally you'll finish with a, you know, a great suntan. Um, you'll be hot and sweaty, um, sore feet, but it is unlike any other type of shooting. And this is why people come from all over the world to come here and shoot grouse. So it's a real benefit when there are grouse to shoot, you know, it, it's just a force for good. As you can see from this Heather Moreland in the Peak District, grass shooting is wonderful for the environment. Moreland owners spend around £50 million on conservation. Much of that money comes from grass shooting. It is the income from driven days and Moreland keepers that are bringing back the hen harrier in England with a brood management scheme. It's a home to the iconic curlew, to golden plover, to soaring raptors like the little merlin, or of course, the main base for the recovery of hen harriers. So let's celebrate the biodiversity, let's celebrate our fight, the fight against climate change, and let's celebrate these stunning landscapes. Now, over the past couple of years, it's been a difficult time for the grouse moors. We've not had great grouse seasons, but the investment from the landowners and the time put in by the gamekeepers doesn't diminish. They're still out fighting wildfire, reducing the fuel load, and making sure that the carbon locked into these hills is safe. The grouse shoot, with all of the other aspects that it brings, you know, the predator control that we do, you know, that has a massive effect on all of the other birds that come to breed here, all of the red listed waders and, you know, the birds of prey, merlin, they're, they're ground nesting birds, um, which, you know, that work that we do is vital for all of them to come here and breed successfully. The GWCT says Driven Grouse is one of the world's most successful conservation stories. For more than a hundred years, it has funded the protection of Heather Moorland. Gamekeepers feel their work isn't appreciated and accuse conservation groups of snobbery. Grouse shooting. Um, has been the leader in conservation for 100 years. Um, it's not, um, it, it should be up there on a platform, um, we should be gold medal, but obviously we have the knockers that say it's uh, a desert that is a monoculture. I mean, just looking down at it now, we've got bilberry, um, crowberry, the heathers. Politically, grouse shooting beat off attacks in Westminster last year. Under scrutiny from the government, it is a conservation and social success story. It is the passion for grouse shooting that means the future is bright for driven shoots. These moors look like this and they thrive with all of this wildlife, you know, because of the work we do. But, I mean, all they have to do is go and look at, you know, a, a moor that isn't managed for grouse shooting. Go and have a look at the wildlife that's there. There's, you know, not, not a lot compared to these managed moors that we have. You know, it's not just for the grouse shooting that, that we do it. You know, who wouldn't want to work out here all year round? The season runs until December. The antis want grouse shooting to fall on its face. They want to cover precious heather moorland with trees. On a shoot day, you know, it just stops the whole shoot day. Um, because obviously, you know, it's not safe to, to, to carry on shooting whilst there's people trying to stop you. Even if you moved elsewhere on the moor, they would just walk and, and find you. But I mean, one thing they don't realise is that, that if they sab a day, as they like to call it, cancel it, all it means is that we put another day on it to replace it. It is true that grouse shooting, and particularly the 12th, can cause some attention from the anti-shooting brigade, but we won't let that spoil us. The shoots themselves and our partner shooting organisations have plans in place and we will win the argument. We have the science on our side and we have these beautiful landscapes. Shooters and estates hope it will be a glorious season for all and for many more to come. Thanks all who took part in that. And we did more on crowds in the Carter Jonas Game Fair Theatre last week. We're putting some of those uh, out online and you can watch them or listen to them by finding the links in the description below. There are podcast series. Thanks to the Field Sports Nation for letting us make these, frankly, political points. And what do points mean? Prizes, that's right, for the Field Sports Nation. Also get to watch their exclusive Tuesday night show, Field Sports Extra, where we promote our weekly prize draw. This week, our prize on that show is a £200 fox caller, kindly donated by Rob Crampton at Best Fox Call, who I met up with at the Game Fair. 
The prize is an excellent Gen 2 Igotech Helion Fox Caller, priced at £195, and there's a link to buy it if you don't win it in the description below. You can join the Field Sports Nation by clicking on the link in the description below too, just £5 a month. And talking of kit, Dan Bibb from Shooting Sports UK is up next on the subject of stalking scopes for under a grand. It's our Field Tester Friday film this week. Right, Dan, I've walked in the shop. I'm new to stalking and I've got a thousand pounds in my pocket. What we've got here is the Hawk Endurance line. They're middle of the range scope. The glass quality on the endurance stuff is really, really good. So it's one piece aluminium tube, exposed turrets. Most new stalkers aren't gonna use exposed turrets. It'd be more advantageous for them really to learn the reticle on holdover. But a nice touch there for the price. It's £499. What's the next step up if I've got a few more good in my pocket? So next step up really gets you to where it starts with Zeiss. So this is £868. So this is a Zeiss V4. It's a 3 to 12. It's got no parallax adjustment. This is fixed parallax at 100 yards. Purebred workhorse. You see your deer, you shoot it. There's no messing. This, you don't need no bells and whistles. It's a 56mm objective lens. This is going to sup in massive amounts of light. Okay, what else have you got? The next one is a, is a Steiner. This is um, £880. You've got a little bit more features on the Steiner than you have on the Zeiss. Um, that doesn't take away the quality for the price point. This would be great for stalking and foxing. Again, big 56mm objective lens that will suck in lots and lots of light. Illuminated reticle. This hasn't got exposed turrets, cap turrets. One nice feature about this, I think the, uh, the zoom lever here is really quite tactile and really quite smooth to operate. So that's a nice, nice touch. These will last you a, a shooting career, wouldn't they? Really? They're, yeah. They're, they're so well built. Yeah. In they are. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, that that's gonna that's gonna last longer than the rifle. That's gonna last longer than the rifle, <laughs> and, and and so is that because the warranty is a lifetime warranty. So you know they're, they're all going to do the job for their price point. Can we just touch on the warranties? What 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 is the offer on all of them? Book is a lifetime warranty, and both of those I believe are three years. Thanks, Dan. You can watch the whole of that film by following the link in the description below. You can buy those items from Shooting Sports UK, and if you don't feel like making it all the way to the shop in Staffordshire or asking them to post it out, you can search for anything you like the look of on Kitfinder. Now to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Marchington. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the top hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. This Friday it's the glorious 12th, so here's top shooting coach Ed Solomons teaching Yuri Janssen how to shoot driven grouse on the clay layout at Glen Eagles. Over to Africa and here's an action-packed film of a mixed bag planes game safari in Limpopo with ranchero safaris. This looks like Africa, but it isn't. Blood Origins looks at the huge game ranches in Texas and asks whether it's ethical to hunt inside a fence. Wash Wildfowler switched to steel shot years ago, and he loves it. Here he's using steel on pigeons. Watch it and decide for yourself whether it works as well as lead. Jaff from South Somerset Ferreters is after pigeons too, but he's going back to basics and making his decoys out of fizzy drink bottles and a dab of paint. Maybe it's all in the field craft, but they certainly work for him. Simon 6 PPC is shooting squirrels with his air gun with his best mate Jack the Black Lab, who's getting on a bit but still manages a few retrieves. Moocher's Ways has this quick tip demonstrating how to hock a rabbit so you can carry it more easily or hang it in a tree to pick up later. And finally, here's one we made for the National Small Ball Rifle Association at their 50 meter championships in June, looking at what it takes to be a competitive rifle shooter. That's it for this week. We've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain on the cusp of the 2022 shooting season. Good hunting, good fishing, good shooting and goodbye. Goodbye.